you might want to bookmark this puzzle. You're going to see why I say that at the end. Three fishermen were shipwrecked on a desert island. They're walking around trying to find a way off and they see a villager. They run up to the villager and they say, can you help us get off the island? He says, I have one extra boat, but it only takes one person. They said, well, who are you going to give it to? He said, whoever can solve this chess puzzle, and he pulls out an old dusty chess set with this position on it. He explains to them that white's pawns are going forward in this direction, but it's black's turn to move first. He says, whoever predicts the result of this puzzle correctly will get the boat and will escape the island. The first fisherman looks at the position for a while and then says, it's going to be a win for white for two reasons. Number one, because it's a chess vibes puzzle, everybody knows that chess vibes puzzles, it's always white to play and win. But also if black tries to stop this pawn from becoming a queen by bringing the rook down, white will play h7, creating the dual threat of pushing both of these pawns forward. And if black tries to stop that, let's just say by bringing the rook over and behind, white will now play g8 queen and even though black can capture, white's going to capture, get the queen, and this is a winning endgame for white. Now at this point, the second fisherman pulled out his phone and said, nope, you're wrong, I just put it into Stockfish. The two guys looked at him and said, "You, how do you have a signal on a desert island? He said, it's offline mode, it's my chess program, I put it in, it's a draw, check it out, Stockfish, depth 18, there you have it. And the way that Stockfish said it's a draw is by bringing the rook over behind and there's still h7, but now black has the move rook a to g1, doubling the rooks, creating this threat so that if you try to push g8, black's going to simply take it and you lose your queen. But if you get a queen this way, you simply move your king. And if white ever pushes this, you just take it because you've got the rooks connected and there's no good checks for white. The only thing they could do is be like, come over here, but then you just take this and the two connected rooks like this against the queen is going to be a draw. And it's verified with Stockfish. He smiles and the other two fishermen are pretty annoyed that he was cheating. The third fisherman said, well, since it hasn't been said, I think black is going to be able to win with the rooks. Although honestly, I can't see why. Now, before I tell you what the villager said, if you would like to pause, which fisherman do you think was correct? Do you think it's a win for white? Do you think it's a draw? Or do you think it's a win for black? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, let's hear what the villager said to them. So the villager said, first of all, you're wrong that it's a win for white because after rook to d8, if white plays h7, black would not bring the rook over and allow the queen, but would simply put the king in check. And regardless of where the king moves, the rook is going to keep putting the king in check. Notice how this rook is cutting off the king so it can never walk over here and try to get towards this rook. So it would just have to keep moving up the board. Check, check, check. And if it made the mistake and went to e7, now white would actually lose after the move king to c7. And even though you get a queen, it doesn't matter. You get checkmated. Look at this. Look at this. You have to go back. And there is a ladder checkmate. It doesn't matter that white had the queen. So the only thing that white could do instead would be to go to F7. But then again, black is just going to keep checking. And white has no way to get out of those checks. Because wherever you go, anywhere here, right, it's always going to be a check with the rook from the side. Okay, so he said it's not a win for white because of that line right there. Then he said, regarding the draw after rook here, H7 and rook here, you are correct. This would lead to a draw, just like the second fisherman showed. After this, uh, the queen moves and you take the pawn. That is indeed a draw. But the villager said, you're wrong because that's not the best move for black. Black has a move that wins the game, but you needed to go past depth 18 on Stockfish to see it. The three fishermen were astonished. And before I tell you what the move is, if you would like to pause what do you think the winning move for black is? Well, if you had a chance to do that, the move is rook to d2 check. And this is a very important move because we need to force the king off of the second rank. And why do we need to do that? You will see in just a moment. So white has to move, 
forward because they can't go back because of this guy. So they go here to attack the rook. And now, what is black's winning move now? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to d8, stopping the pawns here. And you might be thinking, well, wait a second, Nelson. White's going to play h7, and we've seen this movie before. We know what the threats are. It's too much for black to stop, right? Wrong. What does black play here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to e1, check. And now we see why the king needed to be off the second rank. If the king was, let's just say, back here, you couldn't do this check because he would just take you. But because it's on the third rank, we can squeeze this move in. And why do we want to do that? What's the follow-up? If you had a chance to look at that, rook e to e8. And we have created a very nice defensive setup with our rooks. If either of these pawns pushes, we're going to simply take it. And even though white can capture, we're going to take it. We end up getting both queens, and we have the rook to win the game. However, it's not over yet because white's not going to do that. White is going to start using the king to assist and defend the g8 square. And this is where it starts to really get interesting. So king to f5. What is the winning idea here for black? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the only winning move for black in this position is, wait for it, rook to c8. And you might be thinking, what in the world could that possibly accomplish? Wait for one more move. King comes up. The next winning move for black is wait for it. Rook to d8. And you're probably still thinking, Nelson, what's going on? Basically, what black is trying to do is slide both the rooks over so that they are a little bit away from the king. And then there's some shenanigans that's going to happen here in just a minute. So watch this carefully. The king goes up. Now, white has accomplished what they're trying to do. They are threatening to get the queen. So, for example, if we just make a random move with our king that's not good, white's going to simply get the queen, and now it's just a draw because when you take the queen, the king is there to defend, right? This is what black has to avoid. So instead of king to c7, what move does black need to play? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to d7 check. We're forcing the king to go backwards. And after king to f6, what's the follow-up for black? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, now we play rook to d6 check. A check again. And you might be thinking, what's going on here, Nelson? Why did we do this? Well, the point is very tricky. Uh, let's take it one at a time. First of all, if the king just goes back to where it was, white actually gets checkmated like this. Rook to c7 check. Notice that the king has to move forward. Doesn't matter where they go. We are going to simply bring our king over. Get ready to deliver the checkmate here. And even though white gets the queen, look at that game over checkmate with the rooks. Okay, so now we see one idea, right? If the king goes forward, that's going to happen. You might say, wait a second. What if the king goes here? Because now it attacks the rook. Doesn't that change things? Yes, it does. And now black has a different winning move. What do you think it is? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to h6. We're coming over here, stopping the pawn from pushing this way. So if it tries to get a queen, we would still be able to capture it like this, and we win. Now, some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute. Instead of h8, what if white does g8 and gets the queen? Because now if we take, they take us, and they have a queen, we lose, right? Wrong. What does black play to win the game in amazing style? You had a chance to look at that rook takes h7 check it removes the defender from the queen so that if the king just like moves we just take it and if the queen takes us you see the follow-up now rook to c7 it's a skewer and the king can't save the queen and black wins amazing stuff right so let me just recap for you what we just looked at there because that was kind of a lot but after the double checks with the rook we force white to make an unpleasant decision. They can't go here because they get checkmated, like I showed you. They can't go here because we have that crazy line that I just showed you, which means the only thing left for them to do is to come over here and try to attack our rook. And now, what do we do with black? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the only move is rook d to d8. We just go back because we have to stop both of these threats, and this is the only way to do it. And you might be saying, Nelson, what did we just accomplish? We were already there. Why did we do that? 
look carefully at where white's king is. Do you remember where it was before? It was sitting on f7, threatening the queen. But now it's over here. It's two moves away. You say, well, great. White's just going to go back there, right? But now we get a free move as black. What should we do with our free move? We had a chance to look at that. The move is king to b7. Notice I said king to b7 and not king to c7. Now, why might that be the case? Because when the king comes up, we need both of these squares available to do the shenanigans with our rooks. If we only have one rook, we can't do it, and it's actually just going to be a draw. So we have to leave both of these open so that we have those checkmate threats available. So that's why king to b7 is the correct move. And then after white goes back to f7, you can probably figure it out now, but what do we do? Got a chance to look at that. That's correct. We play rook to d7 check again, and we're going to do the exact same thing. King's going to go. We're going to go check. And again, white's going to have the same problems that we looked at before. If they go up, they get checkmated. If they go here, we slide the rook over to h6, and we have that amazing queen, you know, uh, queen idea, like where we skewer the queen, right? So what do they have to do? They have to go to here. And then we go back. And then they go back, and we get a free move again. What do we do with our free move? We bring the king to c6. And notice, we're slowly but surely bringing our king around. So here we go, king to f7. We do the check. We do the check. We go back. This is the only threat that white has to try to come here. And again, we use our free move to bring our king around. King to f7. Rook check. And now, and now there's a different way to finish off the game. What should we play here as black? Well, the move is rook to c6 check. And again, we're creating problems for white. The first one is that if they go up here, they get checkmated again. Rook to d7 check. Look at this. It forces them to the back rank. And all we have to do is defend our rook. And it doesn't matter what they do here. Yes, they can get a queen. They still get checkmated. Okay? So they can't move up which means they have to go back to g5, but they still have threats here of getting a queen. So what do we do? That's correct. We go back with our rook yet again. And then after they go here, we bring the king one more time to e4. And after king to f7, now we can come in for the final blow, king to f5. And white doesn't really have a whole lot of options here. King to e7 would be one try. If you would like to pause, how do we win from here? We had a chance to look at that. We simply slide the rook over to a8. We still have both of these guys blocked off. If they push them, we just take. So for example, you just simply take it like this. And if they don't push and they move the king back here, then we simply have a checkmate. All right. So that's that. And then white has one other try here. They could promote to a knight. Now, why are they promoting to a knight instead of a queen? Well, if they promote to a queen, they just get checkmated, right? This is our threat. You see that? We got the king stopping the retreat squares. That's our checkmate threat. But if they promote to a knight, now when we go check, they can actually block. But it doesn't save them. What do we play here? That's correct. The easiest thing to do is simply take the knight. And when they take us back, we come over here and we take the pawn and we win. This is a winning rook and pawn endgame. Wow, that was incredible. The third fisherman got the boat, sailed off the island, and went home, even though he didn't see all of that. Hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I'll see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, take care.